Hi, this is Ken from 3D Mojo channel. Today I want to talk about how to build your Ender 3 or any of your Creality printers correctly by having the proper tools to start with. By using these particular tools you will actually be able to build a more accurate printer that will give you less headaches out of the box than what you would have gotten from the factory. Now the factory gives us a little stock flathead screwdriver. Frankly I have no idea why so that just kind of goes out the door for me. Um, they give you a small six millimeter. Uh, this is for your hot end to remove the little nozzles. It's very weak. Um, I had a hot end stuck on mine from the factory. Apparently it had some PLA already in it or some type of plastic and um, it just about bent this thing in two. So instead of using this I've opted for a better quality um, six millimeter wrench with a uh, closed end and an open end. Now for the next tool that they give you they give you this one with an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. The 8 millimeter is very commonly used on this because this is the one that fits the back of the V wheels and a lot of the um, what we would call 5 millimeter uh, Allen head socket screws. So I actually got an 8 millimeter again to replace this one. I really like using this. Uh, it's just done so much better. And this next tool is not essential, but I actually like using this sometimes over the wrench, and you have to be gentle with one of these. Uh, this is a, um, a vice grip, and uh, this one here, you can adjust it to just barely snug onto the back of the uh, five millimeter type um, nut that you're working on. And I like these because I can adjust it to any tension I need, plus with the weight of it, uh, often I need like a third hand and I can just sit it here while I'm adjusting with the Allen on this side here. So it helps out a lot in my end. Uh, I'm not saying you have to have this, but it's a good extra tool to have if you have one lying around. Now Creality sends you a set of five Allen wrenches, which are very helpful to a point, but sometimes you find that the actual screw that you're trying to remove is so tight that it ends up almost stripping here and starts to eat into your um, actual Allen head screw. So anytime you can, buy a more precision set. Uh, usually if it says lifetime warranty on it, you're getting something that's a little bit better quality. So you definitely need these, and you definitely need these wrenches, okay? Um, I also recommend having a fine point pencil, uh, some type of lead marker, and uh, this way I can write on my extrusions whenever I'm trying to do some squaring and everything or need a measuring line to work with. Uh, very simple. You can use this as a number two, just sharpen it, pencil. Um, I also use a fine point and an ultra fine point Sharpies. Uh, I use these whenever I need to mark a piece of um, metal that's not black uh, and I want to be able to see where the marks are. I use that originally with my um, Bowden type uh, extruder because I was having an issue with the gear actually slipping from the motor. And I do like a silver Sharpie. Um, this is really nice because, <laughs> let's just face it, it's nice to be able to write on something that's black and, and it actually shows up good. So um, I like this too. It's just something I use to highlight things if I want to make them look a little bit more noticeable. Not necessary. Uh, the Sharpies aren't necessary. I'd recommend at least one for marking something if you have a fear that something's slipping but I do um, prefer to have these here with me. Now, another thing that I like to use is a feeler gauge. Now, everybody sets their uh, tramming height, uh, their, or the bed leveling, by using the paper method, which is fine. And the paper method uses um, a standard sheet of uh, paper, I think it's like A4, and that has a thickness of 0.10 millimeters. Well, I like to set my head, uh, my hot end down a little bit closer so currently I'm using a 0 0.06 or 0 0.05 depending on how um, well my machine's been adjusted and I just feel like I get a better um, adhesion on my glass bill plate by using these now uh, a lot of guys are old school a lot of mechanics uh, our machinists still use the paper method to set up their thousands and thousands of dollar machines and that's fine um, but I just wanted something a little bit less than 0.1 Another thing that I highly recommend is having some type of sanding tool that you can take the edges off of your extrusions. Um, I use a little Dremel type or Ryobi uh, multi-tool here and uh, with these little flat sanding discs. 
And what I find out is uh, it's quick, it's easy to control, and because they're flexible, they don't take off too much too fast. Always get a medium to fine type sanding paper. Don't use anything that's coarse because you'll gouge things so badly. Um, I also like to use the black Sharpies to cover up any nicks or anything that I might see in my extrusions if I feel like I really want to cover something up and make it look better. It's not a perfect answer, but at least it hides some of those little nicks. I use aluminum foil all the time. Um, I use these to make shims out of. You can see some of the shims sitting here where I was actually trying to square this and make it better. I have shims in the uh, bottoms of these um, vertical Z bars uh, extrusions that I use to get this so that it didn't lean backwards or forward, that it was actually perfect 90 degrees up and down. Because from the factory I had uh, that they were leaning this way, it was actually 89 degrees, and from the measurement that direction, it was 91 degrees, which basically is supposed to be 90 on both sides. So that brings me up to the next important things. Um, I use tape to measure and mark a lot of stuff with, and uh, sometimes I might mark heights so that I can keep finding that spot on a ruler, um, or in this particular case, you can see I marked it on a shim. <clears throat> And um, I used this particular shim originally to set up some of my uh, V-wheels uh, so that I could get this perfectly parallel with the upper bar. Scissors are not that important, but I do use these to trim the aluminum foil shims uh, when I'm trying to make some precision little uh, shims. I also use the factory um, putty knife that they give you. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have that here in front of me, looking for it. but. Uh, I use that a lot to also flatten out my shims to make sure that they're not doubled over and uh, nice looking whenever I stick them in there and you know try to get a fine measurement. So when it comes to squaring, I know it's going to seem like a lot, but I like using two squares, one adjustable, one not adjustable. Um, I also like to have a, I would recommend at least a minimum 18 inch straight ruler. In fact, you can see right here I've got tape marks for my measurements. Uh, at least an 18 inch straight ruler. If not, 24 inches would be a little bit better. Um, metrics would be very nice, but I only have an American edition with hundreds or fractions of an inch. And that's, I wished all my stuff had metrics on it, but I just don't have that because you know it is a metric machine. Um, so I do recommend two squares, one large, one small. Make sure they're accurate. And I have a video on showing how to make sure they're accurate. Um, also make sure you have a nice straight edge and it, it needs to be straight. Also, I use a large triangle because I know that this one is truly 90 degrees. I use this one a lot uh, and I also use a thickness gauge, um, not a micrometer. Um, I just prefer to use a caliper. So that, a uh, cup of coffee, some fruit in the background, you know, um, try to enjoy what you're doing. And if you watch the videos that I've produced, you'll see why all of these tools are actually very important so that you can create a printer that will work hopefully just right and not give you the headaches that so many people come across. Uh, if you look on some of the forums out there, Creality Forum or the 3D printer forums and stuff, you'll find that there are a lot of people who are new at this and I'm actually new also. Uh, I just did lots of research and I have a little bit of a mechanics background. And um, they're starting off bad by just putting it together straight out of the box. So many things like these V wheels and the actual uh, extrusion piece, that uh, not extrusion, this cut piece here, these things need to actually be put on so that they're perpendicular to this axis. And because there's so much play when you're putting it in here and tightening up the Allen head screws, you can set this thing off several degrees. So it's just going to make a difference in how this goes up and down in parallelness. Now I have videos on how to set this parallel, how to exchange your wheels for these type of um, polycarbonate wheels and I got to tell you my original wheels were damaged from Creality and they were making lots of bad knocking or jumping marks but ever since I went to these palms uh, these polycarbonate palm wheels B wheels this thing is smooth I don't have any more bumps up and down this just works really really good and I've got my stuff parallel down to about oh I don't know 0 0.03 and down here it's uh, dead on because one of the worst parts of this is when this comes down being that it's a single Z rod 
Oh, I have my Z rod off in case you're wondering how I sat there and went up and down so easily. Because um, I'm adjusting all of this. I'm adjusting the tensions for these V wheels. Um, so when I come down here, the majority of these, once they hit the bottom, they will do a little sag. And that little sag is about two millimeters. So if this one is at zero to your bed and this one is a two millimeters off as it's growing, that's bad. I should say as it starts out because as it goes up, it starts to go back to a, a zero. So it's basically parallel with the top. So again, if um, this is perfectly measured here, perfectly measured here, and they match great, and you come down here, and this right here is not perfect, and you're adjusting your bed to make up for the difference on this side, well, as soon as this thing takes off, this thing flattens back out, and you're just kind of wasting your time. So I've got mine right now working uh, beautifully. It's the same measurement down here um, on each side, and that's what you want. So if you find this to be a little helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want to see any more future videos like this. I have a lot of good ideas that go beyond what the factory says that you need to do. And hopefully you'll have a great printer whenever you finish. So take your time. Oh, and before you start assembly, please, please, please make sure that anywhere that you put your palm wheels on, that you take something like this. It could even be a fine file and you need to bevel the edges before you put your wheels on or you're going to end up like me with wheels that have three or four little indentions on every one of them so every time you slide them on the unit they go bump 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 and they end up making a rise through the whole process now I do have a video on showing how to fix your wheels if they're already damaged uh, that one will be coming out very soon also I've shot about 10 videos this weekend and now I just gotta get some time to edit them Again, please uh, like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon, and have a great day.